things. So speed review. Valence bond theory was us trying to reconcile um, the orbitals and stuff that we learned about atomic structure was us trying to reconcile that with making chemical bonds. If we just take orbitals and just try to overlap them as they are, we can make some predictions about what chemical bonds should be like, but they give us incorrect predictions. They give us the wrong bond angles. They give us the wrong number of bonds. And so we had to come up with a new thing to make new orbitals so that they could make the bonds that we see in the data, okay? And so what are these new orbitals called? Hybrids, yeah. We get them by combining the orbitals from before, and by combining mathematically, we combine them and we get new orbitals that work with the data that we have, okay? And so we still have, and I put some new pictures on here, we have hybrid orbitals that are still overlapping with other orbitals. This has an electron, that has an electron, two electrons makes a bond. So we're still going off of that premise. We just need different orbitals to make that work. So that's where this came from, okay? Uh, some of you asked about the math behind that. I went and found my college textbooks and found some pages on that if you wanna go read this later. Um, I can show it to you, yeah. Calculus, it's good stuff. Um, this is what chem majors do in college. Anyway, but we're not gonna talk about that. So then, yes, we, we talked about hybridizing and naming them. The orbitals that we are going to work with are sp, sp2, sp3, sp3d, sp3d2. As a side note, another thing I found in my textbook is that there's actually all kinds of combinations. p3, d3, spd4, sd, right? So there's all kinds of combinations that can be used in different applications. We're just kind of doing an overview, so I'm just giving you an idea of hybridization. If you want to go be a computational chemist or a physical chemist, you can learn all of that. So it doesn't have um, to correspond to the electron configuration? It doesn't. Okay. And that was actually a question I had before, because if you go by electron configuration, we have S, P, 3, but what comes after P is another S. Yeah, yeah that's what I would that's a question, so if you look at my notes under the slides, on one of the slides I'm like, why are we skipping S? We go SPD instead of SPSD. I haven't found an answer to that. But um, I don't know, this kind of indicates that like, well, there's all kinds of combinations possible. So I don't know, it's, it's interesting. It's a whole world, you could like spend your career studying this. Okay, so there's a bazillion rabbit holes in chemistry that you can go to. Okay, so we got that. Um, okay. Today, we need to answer this question. How do I make double bonds and triple bonds using hybrid orbitals or using orbitals at all? Okay, we made single bonds in the previous lesson, but now we need to make multi bonds, okay? And this is still our hypothesis. Okay, that, that's, we're gonna make this work, okay? Covalent bonds are formed when I overlap atomic orbitals with unpaired electrons, okay? And sometimes the orbital is a hybrid, but I'm still overlapping orbitals to make a bond. How do I make double and triple bonds? I'm glad you asked, okay? This is some of the problems we raised earlier. Okay, both of these have double bonds, so how do I make that happen? Okay, so let's start with a really simple molecule that may or may not have a double or triple bond, okay? Let's try to draw it. This is called ethylene is the common name. Ethyl means two carbons. Ene means double bond. That's an organic chemistry thing, but now you know. I got two carbons. My skeleton is going to look like this. How many total electrons are we dealing with? Carbon gives me how many valence electrons? Six. That's how many it has total. It has four total. It has four it's valence four electrons. electrons. Yeah. So it's got six total, four valence electrons. So 12 yeah. total. Four, four, and four. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I need two more. There we go. Everyone has an octet except for hydrogen. Hydrogen doesn't want an octet. So there's my molecule. Okay, great. We know how to draw this, but 
what is happening with the orbitals that gives me this double bond, okay? Let's use what we've talked about before, okay? What is the hybridization of carbon in that molecule? Didn't, wasn't, uh, you showed us, it was that, uh, it was the tetrahedral one, but it was like the S, if it was tetrahedral, it would be sp3. Oh yeah, sp3. Mm -hmm. So throw this is a throwback to last week. In order to answer this question, I basically just count the electron groups. Okay, step one was dry, which we did. The carbon they're going to be it's the same answer for both carbons because they're in the same bonding scheme. So let's look at this carbon. How many electron groups are there? Oh, so that's the third. Four. No. Three. A double bond is one group, right? The double bond doesn't split apart. It stays as one group, right, in Vesper theory. So this, there's three groups. Side note, what shape is that three things? Uh, trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. Three groups means I need three of carbon's <coughs> orbitals to make three hybrid orbitals. I have S, I have P, I have P, I have P, and I have D and D. What are the first three that I should use to make hybrids? S. S is my first one. I need two more. P. P and P. P. There's three P's. I need an S, I need a P, I need another P. You need two P's. Those are the orbitals that we are using to hybridize. One, two, three. I need three orbitals in order to make three hybrid orbitals. So what should I call a hybrid orbital made of an S and two Ps? What should I call it? SP2. SP2. That is the hybridization of the orbitals on both of those carbon atoms. Right? If I look at this carbon, it also has three electron groups. Same thing. You okay with that? Question? Why did I what? Because we didn't need them. We only need to make three bonds I use those other orbitals if I need to make more bonds. We consider this, yeah, it's a double bond, but it's it's one bond, but it's a double bond. I don't know. You think of it as one bond or one electron group. I'm trying to figure out the best way to say it. It counts as one for, for this question. Okay, so what do I have next? Okay, so here's, here's what we're dealing with. This is carbon to begin with. When I hybridize it, I'm gonna take this S orbital and these two P orbitals, and I'm gonna make my three hybrid orbitals. Yes? What about the first SP? Like in the hybridized? This? Um, no, the SP with the electron. The two P, I mean. The two P? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was gonna bring up. Notice how one of these orbitals didn't get changed. So this 2p orbital is still there, and I had four electrons, and they're all going to be they're all going to go in unpaired um, orbitals. They're going to be unpaired. So theoretically, it could pair with something else. It could, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay, so this is what my carbon atoms look like. There's my carbon atom. There's my carbon atom. Okay. So let's look at the bonds we have going on here. One of the, so two of these orbitals are gonna bond with hydrogen to bond to the hydrogens. I probably have a picture of this on the next slide, but I'm gonna draw it. Yes? And then I need, on this carbon, two of the orbitals are for bonding with hydrogen, bonding with hydrogen. These orbitals can connect and make a single bond, but I need to make a double bond. Do I have another orbital that I can use for that? The gray one. The gray one, which is called what? 2P. 2P, dun dun dun. The 2P orbital, or just a P orbital in general, depending on the energy level we're on, is where I get the double bond. The P orbitals, the leftover P orbitals. Double bonds are formed by unhybridized P orbitals. It's the leftovers that can overlap. Okay, I have lots of pictures here. I will. Okay. Um, 
Dang it, I didn't have a picture. Yes, okay, so here's what we're dealing with. This is kind of, this is technically, this is a different molecule, I probably should change that, okay? But it's the same idea. I've got a carbon making a double bond to something and then making single bonds here. So the single bonds are with the hybrid orbitals, okay? But the double bond is the hybrid orbital and those p orbitals, right? These p orbitals um, overlapping with each other. So this is how we make double bonds and triple bonds, okay? And I'll show you how triple bonds work in a second. Okay, and so chemists are gonna differentiate these types of bonds because the overlap is different and they're, uh, they overlap in different ways, okay? So this is gonna lead me to different ways of naming bonds, okay, which are worth mentioning, okay? And there's gonna be some features of these that are gonna be important to know, okay? So real quick, if I have two orbitals that overlap head to head or end to end, that's called a sigma bond. That's a sigma, lowercase sigma. Just two orbitals overlapping head to head, okay? So that's gonna be these ones, right? Two orbitals coming in head to head, sigma bond. And then a sphere can only go head to head with another orbital, sigma bond, sigma bond, okay? If I have P orbitals that are overlapping by coming side to side, that is a different type of overlap, and so that is called a pi bond. Are pi bonds weaker than sigma bonds? So I, I was about to say that, and I had that on the slide, and I, I, I feel like one of the textbooks I read said that, and then I was looking at bond data and stuff, and then went back and looked for it, and I can't find it, and the data in the data tables I have is inconsistent with that. So I don't know if that's necessarily true. So what's like the main defining trait of the sigma bond, just the shape? Uh, it's gonna have to do with the shape of the molecule. That'll come in a few other slides. Are we going to do anything in regards to like energy? Yeah. We're gonna talk about energy tomorrow, probably. Okay. Um, what about when molecules have like, or in, like when an element has a lot of different double bonds to a lot of things? Like there was one we encountered a while ago that where one thing was double bonded to like three different things. Uh, that's probably sulfur trioxide. Yeah, I think it was sulfur. Yeah, that's right. It was, I knew it was something with sulfur. Yes. And you had it in one of the worksheets. How does that work? I am not entirely sure off the top of my head. I would have to look, I would have to stand here and figure it out for a few minutes. Uh, because, yes, like you're gonna, we would need a ton of orbitals to make that work. Um, it is also even possible that this might be one of the exceptions where this doesn't fully explain it. Um, I would have to look that one up. The most that we're going to be able to handle right now is two double bonds, because carbon can make two double bonds going each side. This is, double yeah, this is going to kind of bond. maybe be on the edge of this theory. Carbon can make two double bonds or one double bond? Carbon can make two double bonds. Okay. Carbon dioxide. How is that represented with the final model? I will show you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what I want you to understand right now, double bonds are made from p orbitals, and we have a way of classifying bonds based on how the orbitals overlap. If they overlap head to head, that's called a sigma bond. If they overlap by going side to side, that's called a pi bond. Is that important? Yes. Okay, we got that. Okay, so, Side note, okay? When we make pi bonds, a lot, uh, and I just pulled this from the internet and from textbooks, a lot of images make it look like the orbitals are like morphing and like leaning together and overlapping like that, okay? That is not actually what's happening, okay? If we could take normal orbitals and like bend them and make them do weird things, we wouldn't need to hybridize orbitals because we could just take the normal orbitals and bend them, okay? So a lot of these pictures are actually misleading because they make it look like these P orbitals are like morphing and changing shape, but they're really not. In real life, they are just getting close enough to where they kind of overlap side by side. I think it's hard to show everything to scale in one picture, and so they kind of distort it. 
but I'm just mentioning that even though they show it like they're changing shape, it's really not. They're the same shape and they're just getting close enough that they overlap side to side. Is there any significance? So like if those two carbon mo molecules got so close that they overlap, right? Uh, well, in the third photo, does more overlap between the two orbitals signify anything? It does it signify a stronger bond. It does or? Yes. Okay. Yes. And I really want to say that pi bonds are weaker than sigma bonds, but I, ha I, ha I, can't go, I can't find in any of the books where it says that, even though I thought that. And then if, we, if I showed you a data table, um, the data isn't consistent with that. So I need to like go to, I need to probably like tweet all my chemistry teachers on Twitter and, or X or whatever and see what they say. Cause it would like, make sense. It does make sense because there's less overlap. Mm -hmm. um, but I can then show you data that contradicts that and I haven't fully figured out what the story is on that. So stay tuned, we'll find out. Okay, so we've got that. Let's talk about triple bonds. Okay, a simple molecule that has a triple bond would be something called acetylene, C2H2. Let's see if we can make sense of a triple bond using orbitals. Okay, so let's start by the, with the hybridization of carbon. How many electron groups on carbon? Two. two. So in order to make those bonds, I need to take two of carbon's atomic orbitals so that I can make two um, hybrid orbitals. So what orbitals do I need from carbon to mix to make my hybrid orbitals? Someone whispered it. I'm waiting for other people to... There we go, we need S and P, so it's SP. Okay, here we go. So if I were to draw, I don't have the little orbital diagram from before. So carbon before it bonds, um, had that, right? This is S, these are P. So I'm gonna hybridize these two. Okay, so what do we end up with? Well, these are gonna average so I'm gonna get two of these sp orbitals, right? And then look, two of the two p orbitals don't change. Is there any significance to why those uh, unchanged p orbitals are higher than p? Like, I thought like it would make sense when you're combining two orbitals, it would have more energy than a normal p orbital, right? No, because the energy is averaging. So, and this is something I should have mentioned earlier, we're gonna talk about it tomorrow probably, is we can't forget the law of conservation of energy. The total energy in this system shouldn't change. So if I take a high energy orbital and mix it with a low energy orbital, I should end up with a medium energy orbital because two mediums will give me the same energy as one high energy and one low energy, if that makes sense. So energy is being conserved. So great, check it out. I've got some sp orbitals, but now I still have some p orbitals left over. But how many do I have left over this time? Two. So look, I've got a p orbital there, and I've got a p orbital there that are perpendicular to each other on that carbon atom. So now check it out. I can take my hydrogen, and it can overlap with that sp to make an sp uh, to make a bond, a single bond. Right, that, that's that bond there. But look how many connections these carbons can make to each other. The sp and the sp can overlap head to head and make a, what kind of bond, head to head? Uh, sigma. sigma bond. Sigma. But if these p orbitals all get close enough, check it out. These top and bottom lobes make one bond. Okay, so remember, a pi bond is kind of split. <coughs> the bottom and top is one bond, so that's a bond. But then check it out. The front and the back also overlap when the carbons get close to each other, and we make a third overlap of orbitals. That's also a pi bond, right? And that is another pi bond. So then I like this illustration here. You can see the sigma bond in the middle 
one pi bond is the top and bottom. So the top and bottom is one pi bond because it's one orbital, right? This whole, this whole figure eight is one p orbital, okay? It just has two lobes, okay? But then the front and back is another p, pair of p orbitals that overlap, and that's my other pi bond. So I have a sigma bond, a pi bond, and a pi bond, which is my triple bond. Is this long wave, Yeah, for carbon atoms, it's gonna be like that, carbon and oxygen. Actually, yes, we'll just say yes. Serena. Um, when you did the little thing over there for carbon, so I'm showing you how these orbitals appeared. Carbon does not normally have sp orbitals. Okay. And so they came to be by combining an s orbital and a p orbital. So that's where these orbitals came from. <coughs> then these blue ones are p orbitals. They were there and they stayed there. They, they were just always there. But the hybrid orbitals are the ones that, um, that, that were, yes, that we made from S and P. Sorry, when they were corresponding I had a brain fart there. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, yes. Does when they were correspond to one electron? Yes. Okay. Because one goes up and one goes down. Yeah, but, okay, so like how are those, like just, unhybridized. How are those two um, electrons in the P orbital like? Well, where is their like? Uh, I don't want to say like Is that what saying? Like how are they mapped to the edge? Maybe. But like where, like on a general unhybridized model, where are those those P orbitals just found? Those P electrons found? Just anywhere in, in that space? They're found in these lobes. Those lobes represent the spatial existence of the electron. So literally, those are where the electrons are. Are in you can you can think of them as being in those bubbles. Cool. Yeah. I'm just looking at all the different. We're in so many different places right now across the room. It's amazing. So, welcome to big classes. We okay? Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, so nitrogen also has a triple bond. Okay, so just another example. So nitrogen, this is in the air. You are breathing this right now. It's not going in your body. It just comes back out because we can't do anything with it. But check it out. Same situation. Nitrogen has two sp orbitals. So it does the exact same thing carbon is going to do in making the triple bond. It's got these p orbitals that are unhybridized they can overlap, and so when we get our overlap, the yellow is a sigma bond, top and bottom is a bond, and then front and back is a bond, triple bond. Yeah. So the two blue ones connect, and the two the uh, yellow ones in the middle connect? Yes, but so it's, this is one bond, the top and bottom, and then the front and back is a connection, and the yellow is a connection, triple bond. Okay, so there's just another example. Okay, um, here we go. So here's another reason I'm distinguishing sigma and pi. Okay, the geometry is gonna matter here. Okay, notice how I meant to build, I meant to build the molecule, but maybe we can just visualize it. Okay, notice how if these carbon atoms were to be rotating, Notice how these orbitals would stay overlapped, right? If I built this molecule, I could rotate these two ends and they could stay connected. Yes? If I have a double bond, if I were to rotate these carbons, would the P orbitals stay overlapped as I rotated the atoms? Wait, you can't rotate the top one like that either. I think I can. Right, but they can still rotate. They're going like this. But this one doesn't have any P orbitals, right? Um, they're hybridized, but yeah, it's SP3. Yeah, okay. It doesn't have on. Like, I can rotate like this. Uh, is that something that, like, it's constantly happening? Yes. 
So another thing we want to keep in mind is like, these are not like solid things. Everything's vibrating and moving to the degree that it can. So what I'm trying- there's two of those things. Right, yeah, if I had a double bond, I should have built this, I was running out of time. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to rotate. Can't rotate. It don't look like that. It looks like that. Put it next to it. Well, it's, just, it's the same thing. It's close enough. I'm just not putting the hydrogen on the end. So on my test, if I say it's close enough, I'm going <laughs> to... Depends. You can only do that for the right things. Okay. So I'm showing you that this plastic model can't rotate. Okay. In real life, that is also true. So this is an interesting thing is that... If I were to rotate these, the P orbitals that are next to each other are overlapping side to side. If I rotate like this, then they don't overlap. They need to stay like this in order to overlap. Turns out the molecule maintains that overlap and it will not rotate into an unoverlapped orientation. Okay, so multiple bonds, multi bonds, double bonds, and triple bonds do not rotate, whereas single bonds can and do rotate. Okay, so I've got three hydrogens over here, three over here. They can kind of spin like propellers and they do. Okay, whereas this molecule, notice how it doesn't rotate and the hydrogens, I don't have hydrogens, but I can show you the bonds. Notice how they're all in the same plane. Yeah, that's exactly, yeah. And so even on top of that, multi-bonds are actually shorter. So they're even like closer together. So it's like cinching, you can, you can think of it as like cinching the carbon atoms together. It's more secure, it doesn't rotate, and they're closer together, and it's a stronger bond. All of that is true. So notice how all of these are flat in the same plane, okay? So multi-bonds do not rotate. Does rotation specifically cause I don't know if the causal relationship yeah. is in that direction. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, practice and we're done. Is that molecule flat? Are all the atoms in the same plane? Or do we have rotation such that the atoms can move out of the same plane? They're all in the same they're plane. They're all in the same plane. Then, they're planar. So planar means no rotation. Yes. Well, planar means no rotation and they stay in the same plane. You could have no rotation and they're stuck out of the same Those plane. Those are planar. Say again? You could be not rotating, but yeah. they're stuck out of the same plane. How would that look like? Mm. I'll show you, if I had multiple double bonds that are perpendicular to each other, I'll show you one. I'll show you one. Okay, okay. so, sorry, a lot of you said planar, this is planar, okay? These, so like if I had, these hydrogens cannot rotate around like this, because this bond can't rotate, right? So this will be in one plane, okay? What about something like this? Are all of those atoms well, one side can rotate. Hydrogen, the hydrogens can rotate. Yeah. We'll come back to this tomorrow. These ones, they can rotate. Right. Boom. Got it. I'll see you guys tomorrow.